All right. We back. Yo. We back. Sorry, I had to turn on some fans to edit this bitch out, but. Yeah, hey, do you think? Is it too loud? <laughs> What's going on? 44 T Palm. T T Palm. Jay. Thanks for dropping in. Kenyon Mercury. Damn, you need even more people. See, this is why I want to do my lives with you because, because you know, you already got such a big network of people. I, I'm pretty late to the social media game and getting tapped into stuff. Like, I've only really been active in the last, like, few years. Damn, and, uh, when there are fans on. Nah, yeah. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. Um, yeah, we should do this more often. Hell yeah. Oh, but but the thing I was getting to is as much as I enjoy like firsthand content, like a book, a movie or a painting or whatever, what I've really gotten into is the people who offer uh, criticism or commentary or analysis of shit. They bring insights to a movie specifically. Any I mean, anything, anything. I just I just happen to bring up movies because what's gotten me into movies beyond besides like the like the thing about mystery shopping secret shopping um is that i also hey what's going on fatima yeah king mercury ava thanks for dropping in everybody um i just brought up movies because it's something that i never really pay too much attention to but that as i listen to people who really love movies break shit down and and talk about what the source material is and inspirations and you know what they reflect in human behavior and and society and everything um it's like it 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 helps uh it's like when you see all the memes and shit and you know all the important details about a celebrity or about a a show or you know, whatever, but you never actually <laughs> watch the show or know anything about the people beyond that. Yeah. You know, it allows you to get the benefits of being immersed in a particular subculture or in a particular piece of content without actually having to engage with it yourself. So, um, what movies do you like or what, like, directors or writers or anything like that? Um, uh, I don't know. I don't know too many like directors' names I would bring up, but as far as like movies that I've liked, I really liked. Um, there's a movie, a, a, a classic Korean film, modern. Uh, yeah, there's a, a film from South Korea called uh, uh, Ah Old Boy. Oh yeah, Old Boy. Old Boy, that was a really good movie, and I found that out as a matter of fact through this video reviewer, movie reviewer online called um, his ch- ah, his channel is called Your Movie Sucks, and his name is Adam. He's Most Canadian. Blow. Yeah, I mean, at the same time, though, as of somebody who really loves music and shit, I feel like most albums, most music fucking sucks. You can drop 90, in on any open... 98% of music, yeah. TV, and movies. Maybe 90, maybe 90%. I'll say 90%. One out of every I, 10, like, mm-hmm. professionally produced, you know, pieces of art Things. Is, going, yes. is going to be worthwhile. And that's being yeah. generous. No, ex- exactly. And that's exa- that's exactly it. And it's like, it's not meant to shit on like people just doing stuff in an open mic capacity or doing stuff in a very amateurish way. But it's just recognizing the fact that, hey, there that there is levels to this shit and that your way of just like, oh, I'm just expressing myself, you know, it can still we can still categorize that and we can still be like, all right, well, your level of expression is, you know, kind of wonky and kind of sloppy and kind of, you know, rough around the edges that makes it kind of hard to really sit with but then other people you know for whatever reason they make stuff that is just far more compelling and just sticks with you um and usually most of that has to do in my opinion with experience first and foremost and then mm -hmm. budgetary issues or what have you 
Yeah, I mean, I, yeah, I mean, uh, yeah, having the material resources to match your skill and your dedication and your familiar familiarity with, you know, whatever tools and information that you're trying to make use of. Yeah, you know, um, as far as movie, other movies that I like, um, what's going on with Real Shade? Real Shade of Grey. Thanks for dropping in. Other movies I like, I liked um, Sin City. I liked Dark Knight. I liked Logan. I heard good things about Logan. I didn't, I didn't it. it was really good. It's a good like anti-hero film because it's one of the few hero films where it's like, okay, they're passing off the torch and in a way that makes sense. Yeah. You know, and, they're, and the ending of I one forget, franchise. Did that, was that, did that come out before or after Days of Future Past? Um, I don't know, because I didn't really keep up with the X-Men movies. And I know that I think that was an X-Men one. Um, yeah. I stopped paying attention to the X-Men ones like after like the either second or third one. Like I said, I don't really keep up with sequels either. Like if you make a movie and shit, and you and you make a sequel, there's like less than a fifty percent chance I peep the sequel. I'm just like I'm just like why can't you finish that shit up before? You know the exceptions to that are like Lord of the Rings. The exception to that is like Lord of the Rings, and stuff like that. At the same time though, I watched that stuff when I was so much more young and my attention span was different. I don't know yeah. if you could convince me. To, I don't know if you could convince me to sit through all that again. Oh dude, yeah. See, there's so you know? few movies that I've actually turn on again and, and rewatch the Tarantino mm -hmm. movies fall into the, that category um, mm -hmm. the, good, the, the good, the bad, and the ugly is in that department for me, I've seen it now like maybe six times mm -hmm. hell yeah um, I need to watch the cause this was, uh, not a lot of people know this the good, the bad, and the ugly is technically a trilogy really? so it, yeah, it was the, I believe it was the third film in the series. And there are huh. two previous movies that had come out before with Clint Eastwood in them. And then because of the success of those two movies, uh -huh. Sergio Le Leone got a bigger budget to come back and do the good, the bad, and the ugly on the big screen. Because the other oh. two were like more independent Italian, you know, spaghetti westerns. Yeah. So the good, the bad, okay. and the ugly is like the ultimate spaghetti western because it it basically um, came about as and ended up being proof of the success or the quality of spaghetti western films. Okay, okay. So I really definitely recommend it if you haven't seen it from start to finish. One of these days, pour yourself a glass of whiskey. Okay. That is definitely much. Oh, you know what? I for, you know what's actually one of my favorite movies, and one that's as a matter of fact, one movie that surprised the hell out of me, and I actually think it's a classic and and uh, more deep than people give it granted. It's the fucking Purge films, oh, yeah. and especially and especially my favorite one is the fourth one they made, and this okay. is another exception. And this is another exception to my rule of not watching sequels. I yeah. went to go see the fourth, the fourth and final movie, which was called Purge, the first Purge, or before the, oh. it was, yeah, which is, is like, prequel? which is, it's the prequel, and it's 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 interesting because the whole series of Purge, like obviously on the surface it's talking about like oh what do people do when they have no boundaries and everything? Some people still have a code that they stick to, and other people are just out there to uh, wreck shit, right? Yeah. Now, obviously, but then when you dig beneath the surface, what it's really about is like eugenics and the rich, you know, being able to skate around the issue of having to make people's lives better. Um, and instead, they just give them this day of outrage where they can go out and kill people, those who can't protect themselves, whom nine times out of 10, those are going to be poor people of lower uh, class systems of lower yeah. of the lower classes right so they make some really good so they make some really good social commentary and then it really all comes together in the fourth one okay which is interesting because 
the trajectory of the first three films was like the first one was you know it was okay and it was kind of goofy and then the second one was like an improvement and then the third one was kind of like bleh okay and so then when they came out with the fourth one it's kind of like okay are they going to be able to redeem it because th- like i said yeah. this is one this is one series that i have an exception for i was like no i, re- I really want to see how they finish this and if they do it justice and god damn it whoever directed that fourth one and wrote it and everything <laughs> did a really good job i like the commentary and um and really it just hope it puts the whole series of the purge in a um i think in a really positive light and 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 um you know so to me so to me that's yeah so so the purge is actually probably and especially the fourth purge among my favorite movies of all time okay i should i should definitely watch them mm-hmm. uh, i forget did i i feel like i already asked you did you see uh I think it was called the platform. I didn't. I know what it's about, that's though, another, and that's what. Yeah, yeah, go ahead. No, like that. That's another one that's kind of like a social experiment kind of a simulation. Mm-hmm. Uh, that one's really. That one's really like on the nose, though, because it's oh, literally. Yeah. It's it's literally like people for some reason are at these different levels, literally yeah. at these dif- at, at, in the ground. And that there's a tray of food, a platform of food and shit that starts off on the top and goes to the bottom. And as it... Should we do a <laughs> spoiler alert here? or I don't I know. There's only like... that's established in the trailer in, in the first like two seconds of the movie. So it's not... Yeah, to me, I, to me that feels <laughs> like... Because the thing is, even though I'm not somebody that cares about spoilers, um, I'm also not somebody who tends to just give out details, you know, like that. And plus, this isn't like, it's not like this is a movie review podcast, so. Yeah. But um, I'm just kind of talking in general. Yeah, go ahead, go ahead. No, I was going to say, with quarantine and it, that movie coming out and being, or becoming more popular during the, uh, how many months have we been in quarantine? Just supposed to be uh, It's been, actually, we're going into the, uh, uh, the okay, first one was in months. March. Was in March, so we're now going in over um, almost eight months, seven seven and a half months, seven full months. It's been seven My full months. Was, if you haven't seen the platform by now, that's on you. Yeah, <laughs> seriously. It, it may as well have been four years that you had to watch this movie. <laughs> like, yeah, if you broke down, like, I, I wonder how that math checks out. Like how many days? If you looked at if you looked at quarantine days, like you know how they say business days, and they mean like Monday through Friday. So when they say ten business days, they mean two weeks. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Um, or some bullshit like. Yeah. I wonder if now I hear what you. Days, I hear. I hear what you. I hear what you say. <laughs> one, one day in, in quarantine is almost like two days. Three day, three days. Would you say? Mm-hmm. <laughs> Something like that. And yeah, if it's been a seven full months, you know, that's just, we could say that's like that's, 200 days. Yeah, that's almost exactly. Yeah, so we could say that's like 100 Corona days. You've had 100 Corona days, 100 quarantine days to see and this you fucking movie. Seen the platform. <laughs> yeah. No, I'm just, but, ba- I'm just like, but basically, but yeah, but the, for those checking in, um, plus, I don't know how many people are actually watching. Like, this thing will say, like, oh, there are three people currently watching, but it's like, I don't know if people just like join. Because it doesn't say, I think, if people leave. It just says that people join. So people might join in and be like, oh, I ain't yeah. seen no pussy popping. I'm out of here. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I ain't seen, I ain't seen, I don't, I don't see niggas waving no guns around. So, I mean, I'm out of here. I'm bored. Like, I need some excitement <laughs> on the Friday night. Or whatever y'all into. Um, yeah, I was like, is it Friday? I don't even know what day it is. Yeah. <laughs> but, dude, dude, I haven't even, the thing is, I never even had that, like, oh, thank God it's Friday. Because I was serving tables for such a long time. And oh, so, yeah. you know, so, and those are the best days. And those are the days when you want to work for, you know, exactly. the weekends and shit. So it's like my times to get out and do shit or whatever. I had to just either be on vacation or be willing to go turn up on a Wednesday or turn up on a Tuesday or something. You yeah, know? yeah. You live that restaurant life. Exactly. And I never return. I hopefully I will never return. It's been but, five years. You know, oh, yeah, yeah. I, I see. I'm in the same boat at this point. I'm good on that. Mm-hmm. I did my I did my time. <laughs> yeah. Like, you was about to say though? I was about to say uh, 
Shit. What did you say? And then what was I about to say? <laughs> I, I was talking about how I'm glad to be out of food service. Oh, the um. Yeah. Oh, that I never got to experience. Like, oh, thank God it's Friday. Like uh -oh. having the weekend oh, available. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was just gonna say, uh, working in restaurants though. There is an upside of you get out of your whatever, if you're working you know, at the bar or whatever it may be, you get out of work, mm -hmm. you get your tips, and then you have your full Friday, Saturday night ahead of you. And if you're not working yeah. on Sunday, then yeah, your Saturday night, usually you make the most tips, and then you go mm -hmm. out and you party with your coworkers or whatever. And that That is pretty epic. Yeah, I mean, that's, it depends on what you're in. It depends. It depends on what you're into, because I mean, of course, like you know, drug culture and and casual sex is a big part of that scene as well. But I was, at the time, you know, I was not somebody who gen who really who really engaged in that, you know, too much. So it yeah. was like, so it was like there were plenty of nights when I would just go home just to be by myself, or not, you know, be by myself, or just chill and listen to music for hours, or, or you know, go and watch a movie, you know, or just sit and be by myself and just, you know, surf on the net and everything. And um, yeah. I didn't have those too many of those. Too. Yeah, I mean, those are good times, you know. And and plus, sometimes when I would hang out with people, you know, when they were, quote, unquote, partying and everything, I'm just like, this is what you call partying and shit? Just kind of getting fucked up and being sloppy for several hours. And then people <laughs> talk about, you know, how much fun they had. Oh, how fucked up we got. And it's like, okay, but you didn't do anything. <laughs> like, you oh, literally yeah. do this. There's you literally do this shit every other day of the week. What's so special about doing it on a Saturday. <laughs> you know. Well, a lot of those years for me, before I decided to quit drinking and stuff like that, which as you can see, I'm, I'm partaking now, but that's fine. Um, mm -hmm. Before that, it was like, I was hanging out with people who made music. So typically we have somewhere to go and just like make music or listen to music. And for us, if you're, you know, even if you're, um, drinking or smoking or whatever. I didn't really, I was never really into drugs myself, mm -hmm. but listening to an album in that way with, with people can be very uh, fruitful, I guess. Mm -hmm. it, can be, it can be not only a good time, but it can be very, um, almost informative. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. If not formative. No, I have to, I absolutely agree about, agree with that. Um, I think that all of these experiences, good or bad or whatever, they give, they give you a reference point. You know what I'm saying? They give you a reference point for saying, okay, I'm into this thing or I'm not into this thing or to what degree am I okay with this thing and not this other thing and what, what are my limits, what are my boundaries? You know, yeah. these are, you know, people talk about, oh, character building experiences. And that's like, it sounds corny, but it's real. You know, the more experiences yeah. and stuff that you kind of tack up, it's like it gives you more points of reference that way you can look in your life and be like, hmm, I have an experience with this and this is the way I feel about it as opposed to just always wondering what if. And for a long time, that was the question that would beat around in my head and I would just be like, oh, what if, what if, what if, what if, what if? And after a while, it's like, you just get sick of it and, you, and you're just like, I'm gonna put myself in this situation and answer this shit. And sometimes it was awkward, sometimes it was uncomfortable, sometimes things didn't go as planned, but it's like, you know what? I answered the question. And I got a bit of experience that I can use to make the next experience even better. Hell yeah. You know? I was just gonna lay a little beat to that because like as you were going, it felt like it felt like the beginning of uh that Eminem song. Mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> spaghetti. It just felt like like it was becoming more and more inspirational. Yeah. <laughs> well I um um We'll have to, we should, we should work on that, like, um, like off stream and everything, like work, like, cause obviously I'm just, you know, this wasn't planned. I'm just kind of going off what is, you know, what I'm feeling. Um, but we could work on like trying to improvise and I like going like a long inspirational rant and shit. Oh yeah. I'm definitely down for that. But yeah, man, I mean, that's what I'm trying to do is, is it's, um, with this thing is that I live, you know, saying I I I live in awe of the activity of other human beings and everything, and seeing how the different varieties and the different way people have to get, you know deal with shit and how people learn to, you know, what I'm saying get their point across and everything. And there's so much beauty in just the survival 
the the living of people every day. You know what I'm saying? And it's not even always in stupid. It's not even always in people having to show you they art or, or or show you the Instagram or show you where they travel and all that. It's just the you know the gestures they give and the conversation they share with you. You know what I'm saying? The 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 interaction somebody has with you at the bus stop or in a line at the grocery store. It's like you know what I'm saying? It's like this is it. You know what I'm saying? That there's nothing more real or more thrilling to that. Everything else, even our favorite art, you know what I'm saying? It's just alluding to real life experiences or real life shit we're trying to feel in real life. But we're just getting from this piece of content instead, you know? Oh, yeah. You know? And these days, you know, I shouldn't even just say these days, but it's like technology and the way society's progressed and everything has push people to feeling very isolated, very atomized and feeling like they can only engage with people on certain terms and certain conditions and everything. Hell, I mean, I feel like like people will make, you could, you could like be waving at somebody or, or just give hi, say hi to somebody or try to engage in mild conversation with somebody in line and they'll make you feel guilty for making them uncomfortable because they can't reciprocate that. And it's like, damn, dude, it's like, all you have to be like, it's like, you know, it's like, uh, yeah, I don't know. I don't know how to describe it. Some, you know, some people are really just so detached from having those spontaneous, visceral experiences that can only happen face to face. And uh, I, I do think that's something genuinely in the society. And it's not just a generational thing. Like I said, it affects all people who have access to the technology and are affected by these changes, you know, by the things that we see and we hear and understand about ourselves in the world. You know, a lot of people of all generations are feeling more atomized and alone and, and, uh, you know, just kind of underscoring how fragile, you know, saying this life is, how fragile life is, you know, but also underscores how precious it is. Yeah, I don't know why that just reminded me of um, the thing that happened in uh, Beirut, right? That Beirut, city. yes. Lebanon, yeah. Like, did they ever find out what, what was the official word? I know they said that, what, what they trying to say? It was a fireworks factory or some shit? I haven't kept up with it. Apparently, it's like a web, it was a weapons depot. And I guess that there was. You know, I mean, I don't know the likely, I don't know the chemistry behind it. I don't know the likelihood of this stuff happening. But apparently, you know, for whatever reason, some explosive materials that shouldn't have either been present or been able to set off was set off. And so what, but was it an accident? I don't know. I haven't kept, I didn't keep, you know, I, I you know, peeped the story for a few days, it's but I can't to, say it's something that argue. I really kept them. Hard to argue that it was an accident. Either way, even if even if it was like, oh, this wasn't supposed to be here and all this shit. Seems I mean, who's like, to, I mean, who's who's to say? I mean, I don't know because I mean, you got to figure like, it's it's you know, it's kind of like when you hear about like, like we like last time we chatted, we had a, it was an earthquake, right? Mm -hmm. Last time we chatted, it was an earthquake, yeah. and you know, for us, it's just kind of funny because you get a little, it's a little inconvenient or whatever, but then it's it happens and then it's over. In other places that don't have the same regulations in their building code, or it's just not as stable or consistent and everything, um, that little shock of waves and everything could decimate an entire fucking neighborhood. Yeah. You know, and so it's, it's, it's not to say that, oh, they have lower, it's not necessarily to say that they may have lower standards or lower expect, different expectations, but it's just like, I'm not, I don't know. I don't want to, because I don't want to jump on like the uh, train of like, well, it couldn't have been an accident. You know who their enemies are, and you know blah blah. blah. It's like it's, it's 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 you know accidents do happen, and then there's also conspiracies that do happen. But I haven't done my due diligence. I haven't tried to keep up with it or really get the scoop on it. You know, so I can't. So I won't say. It was a large amount of ammonium nitrate storage facility. Yeah, and ammonium nitrate is a volatile substance and if it's not kept in the right conditions you know something can happen and i don't know if that's a matter of like humidity or 
you know, if there was some other type of work going on that was, you know, what, I mean, people also just fuck up and, and also don't follow the rules and regulations that they know they're supposed to. Yeah. You know, so, so I, I just don't know. I haven't kept up with it. That's the mo what, what Cherry Blossom just said is the most that I know about it. You know, I was just mostly paying attention to the, the way that, it, you know, the way that it affected people's lives and how people have been trying to rebuild, you know. But but you brought that up because I was talking about how fragile life is. Exactly. Yeah. And then th wasn't there another explosion like soon after that? But just like people had already been like most normal average you know, citizenry that aren't Lebanese were just seemed like they didn't know about it or they didn't hear about it or they didn't care. I don't know. I don't, I don't want to judge anybody's response to it, but that's what I heard. That there was another explosion soon afterward, but it was largely not reported. I don't. Again, I don't know. I haven't looked. Like I said, I haven't looked that deep into it. Um, I think, I'm pretty sure I'm correct on that, but uh, yeah, that's tragic. Oh yeah, it is, and it's you know. You know, again, life is such a very precious thing and, and uh, you don't realize, you know, you just don't realize it until it's, you know, something's in jeopardy and then you just kind of go back to your life, you know, go back into your routine, you know. Um, did you keep up with the cuties thing, the cuties controversy, Netflix? I didn't keep up with it, but I heard about it, that it was like a kind of a creepy movie or something. Basically, Cuties was a film made by, um, I forget what part of Africa she's from, but an African woman. And she oh, really? basically was making, yeah, she's, um, and she's based out of France. And um, she basically was making this film, Cuties, from that, through Netflix, that was supposed to be highlighting how girls are over-sexualized. Right. And... And what happened yeah. is, you know what? It's there. Back to me now. Yeah, Some, and so I, what? Someone I know said they watched it. Or something. And and so what happened is that it was so it was supposed to come out in France first, right? France Netflix. Yeah. And and they had a movie poster, and an ad, yeah, and a movie poster, so right? And yeah, and that one was and the and the first one, the original one was just like oh four girls who were like seemed like they were out shopping or whatever and just, you know, giggling and everything. And it looks really, you know, innocent and shit, right? Um and then the on the American poster, it's a clip of the girls from a dance routine that's also part of the film. But that and I haven't even seen the film, but apparently the scene that that screenshot is from is Specifically, supposed to underscore and make you discomfortable. Discomfortable is to make the viewer uncomfortable, yeah, yeah. and underscore the point about hey, don't. It's like hey, do you get it now? Don't you see how we take young girls and we, um, you know, saying we we do this shit, and it's like I know a dude. I've known people who are cho choreographers, and I've asked them about that. I was like, do you think like I was like, do you have any reservations or concerns about like the girls and some of the costumes they do or some of the dance routines? And they'll just be like, yeah, at the same time, though, it's 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 what's happening. It's the movement. It's it's, you know, because part of yeah. it because part of it because part of it in the U.S. especially is this um, owning sexuality and being, you know, comfortable in my body and everything. And it's like, I get that. And I understand, you know, sword because on the one hand, like when people bring it up, maybe they do have the best of intentions mm -hmm. and you can bring it up in a way where all of a sudden they're like well what do you mean like what mm -hmm. are you saying they project it back onto you like, you're like yeah well maybe little girls shouldn't be wearing like bikinis or whatever <laughs> shit like that and we yeah but i mean that's the other thing is it's like it's an unregulatable problem because yeah parenting is uh, everything is isolated in space well, well, not exactly. Well, not exactly, though, because well, not exactly because I mean, I get what you're saying on one hand that like, yeah, kids are raised by their parents, but kids aren't only raised by their parents. 
you know, yeah. they're all, you're all you're all don't exist where they're like profiting from perpetuating this weird well, no, not even, it's it's not even that. I'm just talking about like your peers. I mean, the people who 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 influence you the most are your peers, those who you're trying to get to like you, and 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 approve of you, you know. And so yeah, and while the yeah, there may be different forces that come in with that, it's like, no, if you're if you're trying to be part of a particular musical subculture, you're, then you're going to try to get in with the people associated with that and and fit in with that, no matter how uncomfortable or foreign some of the things are to you. If you're trying to get into a particular career, even though you have different reservations about some of the people or some of the practices, people time and time again will, you know what I'm saying, swallow their pride and keep their mouth shut and just go along with shit that, that makes them feel a certain kind of way, you know? And then just drink the pain away or, or have some type of escapism from it later on down the road in their off time. So it's like, you know, but it's because the thing is, it, it goes both ways. So like the beauty pageants, right? People make this point about like beauty pageants and they're like, well, the beauty pageant for grown women is annoying enough because it's really superficial and just reducing these women who are oftentimes very accomplished um, professional women and reducing them just down to how they can be pieces of eye candy, you know? But then you take that same premise and you just scale it down to adolescent girls not just adolescent children because there is there is exploitation of boys in many respects but there's no boy beauty pageants that i know of oh that reminds me did you see that episode of it's always sunny in philadelphia i haven't if it's if it was about a boy beauty pageant then i haven't i've only no i, I, no, I, no, I no. do like no go ahead go ahead was it no, there was a, there was a, I think they just had their token gay kid who was like part of the beauty pack, but he wanted to be, you know what I mean? It was, it was one of those things mm -hmm. like, oh, you can't, you can't tell him that he, like, you know, like when a, when a boy wants to be a cheerleader. Oh, and okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like a political, a matter of political correctness. You can't tell him not to, <laughs> that would be sexist. Yeah, so yeah, it's, yeah, always, yeah. Sun, it's always sunny in Philadelphia. They did an entire episode where Frank. Uh, uh, you know, uh, um, Dan DeVito's character, he, like, yeah. is running a, you know, he's basically the creepy old guy running the pageant. And, <laughs> and then, like, D, sweet D is, like, kind of, like, trying to coach them and train them in different things. And then, uh, I think Mac, Dennis, and Charlie are probably just off to the side just watching the train wreck. And they're yeah. probably just largely creeped out by it though i know they come in later and they have some of the role to play because you know how like <laughs> mac is secretly gay yeah 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 how much of always sunny have you seen i've seen enough to know that part and yeah. i can't tell you I don't, I don't know i don't know is it still i don't know if it's still going on but um again they, like i said it's not it's not they, okay so they must have been on for a while they must be going over 10 seasons at this point maybe 12. They just finished their 14th season oh. right before quarantine hit. Oh, so they, shit. They okay. They finished their, their 14th season, and then they, they were supposed to do another. They were supposed to have, like, a 15th and a 16th or some shit. They signed up for, like, hella seasons. I don't know, bro. Like, Damn. I think, I think what they did is they, like, decided to take a break, and it's going to come out, like, next year type of thing or whatever. Yeah, or that's good. I could be wrong. Maybe they filmed their fifteenth already, and it's gonna come out too. Now, I, as an always sunny fan, I wouldn't mind that. But at the same time, I want them to make sure that they make it well because I want them to stick the landing. Right. Right. Like, you don't want them to just. You don't want them to just put. It's like, yeah, y'all been around long enough that if y'all take a break, we'll still be fans. Will still uh, be there. That's like, you it's know. like Curb Your Enthusiasm. Have you seen Curb Your Enthusiasm? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. I had finally binge watched the whole thing during quarantine. I had seen like a few episodes here and there before that, but mm -hmm. but they they had I think they had ten seasons, and it split up over like a twenty year period. Hmm. So like on average, they did a a season every other year, but really it was broken up into like pockets. Like they had the first season. And then I want to say they got picked up. Maybe they did two or three. Then there was a break or something. Where they did like four or five, six or some shit. I'm just spitballing mm -hmm. here. But the, the idea itself is interesting. 
And it's a testament to how, I guess, respected Larry David is over at HBO, that they were just like, listen, Larry, give us a season. Don't give us a season. What do we care? You know what I mean? <laughs> like, like, but uh, <laughs> that reminds me of the producer's uh, season where it's like um, Albert Brooks or Mel Brooks. Mm-hmm. Like, he has, like, a secret agenda as to why he wanted to get Larry David on the show. Yeah. Because he thought, he thought that he was going to ruin it or something. <laughs> and then Mel Brooks would finally be able to retire because it would be such a, an atrocious version of the of the Broadway musical. Yeah, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I forget what happens, but something weird like that. Just the concepts are so zany. But they're actually still somewhat... Like in the realm of reality, so it kind of works. Mm. Yeah. Um, speaking of Larry David and Jerry Seinfeld and that shit, uh, do you ever uh, do you ever watch Tuesdays with Stories? No, never even heard of that. Oh, okay, okay. So um, the way I heard about Tuesdays with Stories is through Mark Morland mm-hmm. and um, his 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 partner on the show, Joe List. They had also been on, on the Joe Rogan podcast like separately before this, and I'd seen their episodes, but never really looked into them any further. Mm-hmm. Long story short, uh, Jerry Seinfeld ended up like shouting out Mark Norman like at a fucking Mets game or some shit, and uh, and because of that, like they were like, "Oh, Jerry Seinfeld's like new favorite comedian or whatever," and then mm-hmm. yeah, Mark Norman kind of like got a little pop from that and. Uh, uh, yeah, so Mark Norman and Joe List are the co-hosts of Tuesdays with Stories, and um, they're just two fucking hilarious motherfuckers. I think you would enjoy them. Okay. Remind me of that. Hopefully I'll remember that later. Um, what's, I guess what kind of content do you, are you consuming? So I know, like you say, you're working on your album, but like what, um, I mean, I mentioned how I listen to a lot of people who are just like, commentators, analysis, or like they study stuff and break it down. They do like a lot of people, I, I watch a lot of people who do like video essays. What kind of, in podcast, really? of course. Oh yeah. Um, I, I listen to a lot of Kyle Kalinske nowadays, Secular Talk. Um, actually, Secular when Talk? We first started, yeah, when we first started setting up in here, I had the Young Turks on. So okay. I do like to watch those two particularly because I feel that they try to offer a, a genuinely impartial approach or attitude to how they treat different occurrences, different different people, different players in the in the game of politics. Yeah. Um, I you know I like to keep some some late night stuff still on the back burner. So like I used to watch uh, you know Conan was like one of my favorite shows to wind down with at the end of the night. And man, mm-hmm. they really just did Conan dirty, dude. It pisses me. Off. First thing, yeah. first he's hands up over at TBS, which was at least at least he had his show still. But I understand the ratings weren't as good. But I mean, mm-hmm. fuck all, man. TBS, come on. Like the only thing keeping Conan alive on TBS was how many people just loved Conan. You know, yeah. nobody else could have survived that. Jay Leno couldn't even have survived that. Jay yeah. Leno, if he if he was over at TBS, his ratings would have been shit, even more so than before. You know, I mean, he had he had his his ups and downs, but and nothing. You know, I I, I don't want to shit on Jay Leno necessarily because I liked watching the Tonight Show back in the day too. But Conan was my guy, and uh, so because of that, I still watch him every now and again, just uh, um, just because he's so hilarious. You ever listen to his podcast? No, I mean, I'm not surprised he, excuse me. Yeah. I'm not surprised that he has, I'm not surprised that he has one. I just, I haven't, I haven't peeped it. I know, you know, the thing is, I have, I have to be honest, is that like, I was never really a Conan fan. The only person of the late night, I never watched the late nights too much, but like, and I guess maybe, I maybe, maybe I'm just a normie in this way, but like, I was, I wouldn't call myself a Jay Leto fan, but that was the one that like, I would pay attention to the most. You know, but it was very. The thing is, like with Jay Leno stuff, it's like it's very, pay, it's very paint by numbers, very cookie cutter. Um, Jay Leno was. 
Yeah, I mean, well, I shouldn't actually. I shouldn't say cookie cutter. I should say that he has a formula. Yeah. And he's been doing this thing, and you know, I enjoyed it. And for whatever reason, during the time that I was watching late night, when I would try to watch Conan, it just it just didn't do anything to me. And people were like, "Oh, you know, he's brilliant and so zany and absurd and shit." And I was at the time, I was just like, it, it, "All right." <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, if I suppose if Conan didn't have any credibility with you. Mm -hmm. And some of the shtick of it could be mm -hmm. seen as pretentious or obnoxious or um, even, yeah, like you said, childish. So, but the thing is, it's like, because he's doing that on purpose and, and that is sort of the joke, it's not that it excuses it per se, if it's still not funny. Sometimes he does shit even to this day where I'm like, oh, that was such a waste of a sketch, you know? Like, you could have done anything else with that five minutes. That's the gang. That's the gamble. Y'all really committed to this fucking <laughs> some kind of you know masturbating bear segment or whatever the fuck. But <laughs> but uh, but I do. Oh, you know another one. Uh, Jimmy Kimmel is still, in my opinion, quality. Like mm -hmm. he he's not a stand-up comedian, but he he has that sort of feel to his to his tone, I guess, or his delivery. So mm -hmm. it, it can feel more genuine because even, you know, Conan was never a stand-up. Conan was mm -hmm. actually thrust into that. I don't know if you know how he got his show and all that stuff. I don't. Politics. I don't. Yeah, so he got his show in 93. So this is mm -hmm. back when, um, well, Carson had, had, you know, he was on his way out, basically. They were figuring out, figuring out who's going to replace Carson. Of course, that went to Jay Leno. And it was supposed to be David Letterman. For years, they said it would be David Letterman because David Letterman... Basically, David Letterman had Conan's show. If you recall, back in the day, Leno would go on late uh, tonight, the Tonight Show, and then it would go to Late Night with Conan afterward. Mm. Oh, meanwhile, over on CBS, because uh, eventually Letterman had the competing show, right? The, um, or no, uh, excuse me. Did I say The Late Show? The Late Show with Letterman, Late Night with Conan. And then mm -hmm. there was something, it, there was Craig Ferguson and there was other people that would follow Letterman. But it was, like you said, that format. And yeah. um, so basically Conan got Letterman's job. Oh, okay. So not a lot of people understand that. But, but Letterman didn't have any hard feelings about it. In fact, they're still friends. But, huh. uh, but yeah, so Letterman and Leno were competing for Carson's seat. As mm -hmm. Carson was not only on his way out, but literally dying, like about to die from like smoking too many cigarettes and shit. Yeah. Um, and then NBC basically last minute was just like, you know what? Sorry, Letterman, but it's, this one's going to Leno. And then Letterman had to go off and basically get another show. And C yeah. CBS was like, all right, let's play ball, you know? And yeah. um, cut to 10 years later, whatever. So, you know, I guess it was. 14 years later, because it was in 2007, that Len Leno was also on his way out. And he had committed multiple times to retiring or whatever, moving to another another time slot or some shit. They mm -hmm. were trying to work out the details of his, yeah. of his re resignation, basically. And then, um, yeah, they kind of fucked Conan over in the same way that they fucked Letterman over. And it was yeah. like, really, NBC? And then you know, honestly, that it was almost like a like a BCAD moment, like a before Conan, after after fucking <laughs> Dick Ed Leno, like because well, really, like if if you think about what happened in the late night realm after that, because um, you know the Daily Show kind of was able to fill. I think the Daily Show got a lot of. Um, gained popularity as a result of what happened there because so many viewers that were sick of whatever, whether it was Leno or Conan or, or NBC or what, whatever had unfolded there were just tuning in to, uh, well, they were tuning in to Letterman also, but they were tuning mm -hmm. into to the, the Daily Show and Colbert, which both of those shows took, up, took off and blew up, and then now look what happened. Colbert got Letterman's show. Yeah. It's a grind. It's a grimy game, dude. Um, yeah. Ah, I the. 
It's a gr- it's a grimy game. Talent? I do not like. I mean, pff, dude, I I <laughs> for for all the things for for listen for for all the gripes that I could you know say my lack of interest in like you know uh, Conan or like you know Letterman or any of the other ones. At least I can say they made me laugh or giggle at some points. <laughs> not once, not once oh, has Jimmy Fallon amused me or made me think anything else beyond the fa- beyond the idea that he is just a bootlicking company man and that oh, is the shit. only way and that is the only way he is able to secure any sort of position. Oh, I don't believe I don't believe he has any smidge of talent because I mean even watching him oh, shit. <laughs> even watching him in the old days the SNL days when he was doing the weekend update yeah, and he yeah. and with Tina Fey and everything and he couldn't even get through the fucking segments I'm like this dude is not even a professional is it like, no, the shit you're like it... no and I'm just and then to see his ascent and then he gets the roots as his ba- as his house band you know. The only thing I can say good about the the only thing I can say good about the Fallon show is the fact that the Roots um, are getting the notoriety that I think they deserve, the exposure that oh, they yeah. always deserve. And but the, beyond that, like, go ahead, go ahead. No, I was gonna say like as musicians, that's like the ultimate kind of exercise in a way, right? It's the ultimate gig. The Tonight mm-hmm. Show wants you as their band, and then you get to mm-hmm. just like collect your fat paycheck every fucking week. You, who knows? Every fucking night, you might, you might, your tent manager might have a nightly check gathering, like mm-hmm. event or some shit. Anyway, and then Questlove, he gets to you know work on any beat he wants to. They get to collaborate on any song, any cover, any segue, you know, any transitional kind of segment. They they are a large part of the games. They actually make the games a lot more enjoyable watching them yes. interact, and they're because they're 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 characters. Are such mm-hmm. that, and that the way, even the way that they, uh, the balance, the dynamic of characters between them mm-hmm. is really interesting. Much more interesting than Jimmy Fallon. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I don't. I mean, ever since then, and I mean, it's been going 15 years strong and shit. And to me, it just kind of reinforces the idea that we don't live in a meritocracy, which, or we don't live in a full meritocracy. That it's not just about being talented, and there are other ways that you can navigate these systems. Yeah. And, you know, it, it, and it's annoying on one hand because when I look at it and I'm like, oh, a Fallon exists, but at the same time, it's what allows for, but at the same time, it's what allows for the Roots to get the bump that they're getting because they're a band that's been doing their thing for decades at this point, over 30 years. And for all their accomplishments up to that point, they were they gave them a fraction of the notoriety that they have now. And so it's kind of like, so it's like their careers have a, yeah, it's more lucrative, but it's also like their careers are hitting like another stage. It's like when you've played all the, you know, they've, they've just ascended to that next, to that next level, you know? And so record sales have probably uh, seen a nice little continual and gradual bump as uh, they've, you know, this is probably their, what, their fifth or sixth year, I think, doing this. Doing what? So it's really uh, doing the Tonight Show, so it's really not that long. It's not that, you know. Oh, no, it's been, it's been, oh, no, it's been, um, I mean, the Fallon Show, I think it's been over t- 10, 12 years now. Well, not on the Tonight Show. He was doing, he was, he didn't take over the Tonight Show until, when was that? Yeah, that was before I moved back because I've been back to Cali since oh, you're 2015. Right, you're right. It, it has been. I'm like looking for my phone, realizing that my phone. Oh shit, my phone is about to die. Actually, my phone's about Oh to yeah. Die. What time are uh, we? At? Uh, it's 12 right now. I don't know how long this particular stream. Oh, this stream is about um, 49 minutes. So we got about 10 minutes left on this one. Okay. Well, I think my phone has like five percent battery. So I'm just gonna <laughs> ride it out. Okay. All right. We'll try to uh, we'll try to st- stick with the shorts. But yeah, but they've been around for but it be, uh, ah. But yeah, because I remember because I've been back in Cali because I was bitching about this same thing in like 2010, 2011 when it was first announced. So it's been like <laughs> it's been around ten years at least. 
I know they, I know, but I know that they moved from, I don't know if they were in LA and moved to New York or New York to LA. I know they made that move, but it's still same, like, same shit. The show premiered in February of 2014. So, you know, six years. Basically. Okay, six years. Sorry, I didn't mean to knock my uh, thing over here. Oh, it's 3 p.m. in the Philippines. <laughs> um, but yeah, man. No, I don't have any pleasant things to say about Jimmy Fallon, and I don't care about what future, <laughs> and I don't care about what future opportunities it destroys. But at the same time, like I said, it kind of gives me. On one hand, it gives me hope because <laughs> I don't care what kind of future opportunities it destroys. It just yeah, <laughs> yeah. Fuck it. Whatever. <laughs> Nothing ever. This is the internet. Nothing ever really. Nothing is ever really lost. It can be retrieved if the people, if somebody really wants to find it bad enough. <laughs> right. You know. Because, I mean, the thing is, dude, like, people are really that fucking petty. Do you know who Jesus and Mero are? Be careful, yeah. in, your pla- be careful in your place, guys. Yeah, I know. <laughs> we gotta watch your tongue. Gotta watch our tongues. How big does this look? Because this thing is huge. It looks like a small fucking... This it's it it looks like it doesn't look big. Yeah, it looks hefty. I mean, it almost looks like a fucking fur ball. Like, it's fat I mean, nug. If I didn't know, I mean, of course, I know it's a nug. But if I didn't know if it was a nug, if I wasn't, is familiar, it blurry? I, I can't. I can't see shit. No, nah, it's just your video is just <laughs> lagging. Like I said, like I said, the audio was fine, but the video it like it skips and pauses like every two seconds or so. Oh fuck that! That sucks. Yeah, but. It's whatever. But you said you know who Jesus and Mero are? Yes, 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 yes. So Wait, they, are you so they you don't like them? No, 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 no. I love them. They're great. Oh, okay. um, but here's the thing. I like their podcast more than the show. The show is a little too clean cut for me. But, you know, the Showtime show. But in any case, I don't want your phone to die. Um, they do their podcast. And... On one of their podcasts, one of them was talking shit. He, he was making a joke about Jay Z. Oh shit! And then, in the pa- and during the cast and everything, he he reads it. He gets a text, right? One of the no dudes, way. He gets a text, and he gets a text on his phone, and it's from, it's not from Jay, but it's from somebody in his. Team. And they're like, "Hey, if you want to keep enjoying those brunches, those brunch invitations or whatever, then like cut down on the." Oh shit! And did they like? Did they reveal this when it happened on air? Just no. He read like he just read it. Like he was. It was during the cast, during the podcast. Like he oh, made a joke. Man. He made a joke, and then his boy That's started talking. Creepy. And then and then he re- and then he looked at his text, <laughs> and he was like, he read uh, the text out loud. Um, because Jay Z. Yeah, I mean, it just shows. I mean, you know, I understand not inviting your enemies or people who make your life hell or something i want the worst for you but it's like somebody's making a joke at your expense you know what I'm saying i'm just like it's like deal with it but a lot of people a lot of people really don't know how to take jokes they really don't know how to take criticism they don't know how to take anybody bursting their bubble of fucking um yeah so let's let's backtrack on this then because i just plugged my phone in so we're chilling on, on whatever okay you're, yeah i just found my charger but okay so ego tripping you- we're talking about ego tripping are we? Uh-oh. I was like, because no, that, yeah, go. No, that <laughs> ego tripping. That's a song by Marvin Gaye, is it not? Oh, I mean, it's a um. It's also I don't a know song if it's Marvin. By... Some rappers have made lips. songs. It's a it's a popular con. I mean, it's a con. It's a you know popular yeah, concert. Yeah, I'm sure it's multiple songs. Multiple, yeah. Different, you know, but anyway. Uh, what, what was I gonna say? You were talking about um, oh Jimmy Fallon. You said you didn't like him, and mm-hmm. I just want to know, like, so if you met him, mm-hmm. you would just shake his hand, whatever. But you oh would, yeah, would, it wouldn't be like there would be no animosity or anything. No, no, because I mean, <laughs> no, 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 absolutely. That's and that's the difference. That's the thing is that I can sit here and be critical of his work, his content, but a person, yeah. a human being. He's a, but a human being isn't. So now, if he played back 
the audio of you saying, like, <laughs> what you say, like, Jimmy Fallon has no redeeming values or some shit like that. <laughs> I, didn't, then, I didn't say, I didn't say, I don't think I said that. I think I said that <laughs> he off. I think I said no that. no redeeming he, qualities or something. <laughs> I think I said something like that. There's no redeeming you qualities. Went in on, <laughs> yeah, but I didn't mean yeah. that as like I didn't mean that um, to him as a human being. I just meant that as far as like what he creates, yeah, the, his, his art, show, his work. You would rather yeah. watch any other late night show than Jimmy Fallon. Yes, exactly. But but at the same time, that doesn't mean I would just want to hang out. There's a difference between enjoying somebody's work and their content, and then saying like, "Oh, they're chill to hang out with." Because the flip side is Jimmy Fallon might be one of the best people to actually just hang out with and engage oh, with as yeah, a human for being. Sure. Whereas some people who create really good content um, might be complete pieces of shit, yeah. or they only, or they exist in this bubble. They exist like, in this, you know. Like Letterman, I bet was like not the funnest guy in the world to hang out with because he could be mm. grumpy, you know. But mm. part of his part of his sort of classic charm was how he was always grumpy on his show. How mm -hmm. So, sometimes you could just tell he was over the interview segment and he didn't, he didn't even bother to hide it. Yes, 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 yes. I would, I would appreciate, I would appreciate it. And that's the thing about like, about Letterman. Cause like I said, I don't remember too much like humor and I didn't watch too many of them separately, but that was something I definitely picked up off of Letterman. I like the fact that he, he didn't, he didn't always, he wasn't, he wasn't like, Oh, I'm so starstruck by every celebrity that comes and sits down. He's acting like a regular person because if a regular person who like idolizes somebody had to actually sit with some with a celebrity for 15, 20 minutes and try to converse with them, they would probably be bored with them. Just like they would be bored with any of the strangers that come in. Because oh, a lot yeah. of people who because a lot of people who just create content, that's all they're good at. Or that's all the parts of themselves that they've developed. They've only developed the parts of themselves <laughs> that enable them to create content. And they're not human beings. Yeah. You know, so it's like if they play back, if they if they if he hits me up and he plays me back, like, oh, did you say that Jimmy Fallon has no redeeming qualities? I'd be like, yes, to his work, but I'm sure he's a wonderful human being. And then David Letterman, I feel I'd probably be like, yeah, I feel like I wanted to smack that old man out of his chair, but at the same time, he was telling he was telling the truth and telling it like it is, which I also appreciate and is also yeah. important and valuable. You know. Um, and I guess that's probably a and that's probably a thing that I miss in general. Like, is I hate the fact that everybody now is just like a company man or a company woman. Like everybody is just oh we're just glad to be here. Everybody's always excited. Everything is always the most incredible. It's like everyone's working at fucking Disneyland and shit. Exactly, it's turning every and facet of this smile. shit into Disneyland. It's like no, it's like where's the quality control? Where's the actual difference? Where's the like? And then people, and then and then that's why people they go really ham on on Twitter or they go ham on like social media and these other spaces and shit because nobody on the inside is really able to criticize openly. Yeah. You know, and then they, and then you have people you know shitting on celebrities and making all these memes and everything, and it's like, well, it's it's y'all know how people are, but y'all keep trying to uh, avoid the shit, and that's actually kind of a funny thing that I have to give credit to the people who came up with reality TV format. Because it's easy to forget that reality TV wasn't always around. That it, it was a yeah. particular trend that, has, that was developed for years and years and years and, got per, and then was perfected, you know, in like less than a decade ago. You know a little over a decade do? ago. Mm. We should save this video. Mm. Let me put some ice in this bad boy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then maybe we can just come back on. Unless you got to go. No, I ain't got to go. I'm, Let's go. I'm chilling. Yeah, this I'm one's about to end. Setup. I didn't even think that we were going to do this back here, but then it kind of worked out. Yeah. Hell yeah. Yeah, this one's your perfect timing, too, because we got less than 60 seconds on this one. So. Okay. I'm going to um, go put ice in the bong and grab another brewski and uh, we'll reconvene. Okay. Cool, cool. Yes, sir.